The next op-amp circuit that we're going to look at is called the voltage follower or the buffer amplifier. And it's configured in the following way. If we have an input voltage, we're going to place that input voltage at the non-inverting terminal of the op-amp. And then we're going to connect the inverting terminal uh, with a wire to the output terminal of the op-amp. And now let's use the abstraction model to show how we can derive the output, the expected output voltage uh, with respect to ground for this device. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my model for my voltage follower or buffer amplifier and I'm going to substitute in the uh, ideal op-amp model. Remember that the ideal op-amp model says there's uh, infinite resistance between the uh, inverting, the non-inverting and the inverting terminal of the op-amp. And then we see that we've connected those, uh, connected the inverting terminal of the op-amp back around to the output voltage with the wire. So in this case, V plus, based on this diagram here, is going to be the same thing as the input voltage. Okay, and um, in this case too, because we've connected the inverting terminal, inverting terminal voltage to the output voltage terminal, V minus is equal to uh, V out. We also know that the output voltage is defined um, by this dependent voltage source right here. And that dependent voltage source is going to provide a voltage that's, that depends on the values of the voltage at the non-inverting and the inverting terminal. So we know that V out is also going to be equal to some large gain factor A times V plus minus V minus. All right, so that's the inverting terminal volt, the non-inverting terminal voltage minus the inverting terminal voltage. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these things into this relationship here. So I know that V out is going to be equal to A times V plus is the same thing as V in minus V out. Right? And since I'm trying to solve for the output voltage here, what I'm going to do is try to get all of the output voltage terms on one side of the equation. So now I'm going to um, divide through by A, so I'll have V out over A plus V out is equal to V in. Right? Now, one thing that we have not yet assumed with this um, this ideal op-amp model is we haven't addressed the assumption for A, and the assumption is that A is approximately infinite. All right. So what we can do now is use this um, relationship that we've come up with, and we say that if A is a very large number, essentially this value, this uh, component is going to approach zero because anything divided by a very large value is going to approach zero, and our output now using this assumption here is going to be directly related to the input voltage. So whatever we put into this um, input uh, into this op amp is what we get out. And that is what we see uh, back on the slide here that um, the output voltage is the same as the input voltage that is supplied to the um, non-inverting terminal of the op amp. So the question then becomes, well, great. <laughs> what purpose does this provide, right? If I put some voltage in and I get the same voltage out, um, why is this really even useful? Well, the reason that this is useful is because we need to talk about the impedance or the resistance between the input terminals of the op-amp. Okay, um, so in our ideal op-amp model, we assume that the resistance between the input terminals is uh, infinite, all right? And that infinite, that assumption of infinite um, Impedance implies that no current can pass between the input terminals of the op-amp. All right, and how is this useful? Well, this is useful for the following reason. What we can do is we can use this buffer amplifier to isolate one part of the circuit from another. So as a simple example, we're going to consider the voltage divider circuit that we see here. So imagine that we have a 15 volt source connected to a 1000 ohm resistor, and then that's in series with uh, two parallel 1000 ohm resistors. We know that the equivalent resistance of um, the parallel combination of these two 1,000 ohm resistors is going to be 500 ohms. So that means that um, a total of 10 volts will have to be dropped across 
this 1000 ohm resistor right here, and across this equivalent resistor, we're going to drop uh, about 5 volts across that. Alright, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, we, we see that this addition of this resistor um, causes current to go in both directions, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place a op amp uh, buffer amplifier um, right in this path right here. Now we said because of the infinite input impedance, or the infinite input resistance, that no current is going to now go down that path. Alright, so the current down that path is equal to zero. So now, um, all the only path that the current can take from this 15 volt source is going to be through these two uh, 1000 ohm resistors. Which means that since no current can go through the op amp, um, what we're going to see right here as an input voltage is 7.5 volts. All right, and that 7.5 volts will pass through the buffer amplifier, and will be um, and the output voltage across this 1,000 ohm resistor now is going to be 7.5 volts. So what this is is this is an isolator circuit. So what it does is it prevents uh, a, a communication uh, or current path uh, between the two circuits here, and it isolates this part of the circuit on the left hand side from this part of the circuit on the right hand side. Because the current is no longer being provided by this power supply, it's being provided by the power supplies that run the op amp. So what this does is this isolates and allows us to um, actually sectionalize our, uh, our circuits. And this comes in very handy when we uh, design things because uh, we can think about what's happening over here without worrying about what we're, what, uh, how the design is going to be impacted um, over on this side. So uh, we can have one group design this side of the circuit, another group design this side of the circuit, and we can isolate the two using this buffer amplifier, and that way we don't have to worry about uh, current communications between the two uh, changing the results as it would in this case.